Hi, I'm Dawn Carnegas. I'm with the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition, otherwise known as IHMC. Um, some of you in the room might know my voice or be familiar with my voice uh, as the contrasting voice to Dr. Ken Ford on a podcast called STEM Talk. Um, maybe contrasting personality as well. <laughs> um, but uh, also, I'm a research scientist at IHMC, and specifically, I focus on looking at ways to optimize human performance and resilience in extreme environments. So undersea operations, high altitude operations, and even space, just as an example. So I'm bridging with Brianna today just to quickly give you an overview of three studies that are currently funded that we're conducting at IHMC. All of these are DOD-funded studies, and they're human studies, and they're looking at the effects of ketone esters on physical performance, cognitive performance, and also resilience against stressors that military operators experience in some very specific mission sets that they work in. So first and foremost, um, Dom Diagostino talked a little bit about the undersea operator population. And so specifically, we're looking at ketone esters for protection against uh, decrements that we see in cognitive performance, physical performance, and also hypothermia in individuals who are working in cold water operations. So think of these individuals as they're in a submarine for a very long period of time, all the different decrements that you experience just from being in a submarine alone. Then they're launched out of the submarine. They're in a very tight, cramped uh, uh, vehicle in water, so they're immersed the entire time, breathing high-pressure oxygen, typically cold water. They can't move, they can't fuel, they can't hydrate, sometimes up to six hours. At the end of that mission, they're expected to launch out of there and operate to the best of their ability. <laughs> so we're trying to find ways to help pre-fuel them and kind of protect them against the hypothermia that they're experiencing and some of the other things that they're experiencing during the course of that mission and also help them operate to the best of their ability once they get to the target site that they're working at. So specifically, this is an ONR undersea medicine uh, funded study. It's for two years, and we're actually doing it in collaboration with Wright State Research Institute. Again, we're looking at cognitive and physical performance assessments. So these are all mission relevant. So these aren't typically standard task batteries of just looking at VO2 max. And I'm not saying anything bad about VO2 max, but essentially the end user populations that we're working with for all of these studies want to look in mission relevant scenarios and get answers specific to the populations that these will be translating to. Um, we're looking at muscle recovery. We're doing that with muscle glycogen ultrasound, inflammatory markers in the blood, core and peripheral temperature as well, because we think that there might be an impact of fueling with ketone esters on overall uh, temperature and also peripheral, uh, peripheral temperature as well in these individuals. So this is actually a study, this is a second study, and this is actually, we just finished up our pilot, our pilot runs, and we're getting ready to transition into recruitment and start the studies here in the next few weeks we're really excited about. So this is a Special Operations Command funded study. This is a phase one STTR, meaning that human is actually the lead uh, award on this, and we are actually the sub-award, and we're doing the independent human studies. And so we're looking at ketone esters for protection against cognitive deficits that you see with hypoxia. And so we're thinking about high altitude operators, even aviators in this setting. So we're simulating 16,000 feet, 16,500 feet of altitude using a reduced oxygen breathing device, and we're doing 16 subjects, and we're looking at cognitive assessments, eye tracking, and grip strength. And again, we're looking at ketone esters and the placebo as kind of pre-fueling before they go through these exposures and looking at the impact on overall cognitive performance in hypoxia. And last but not least, this is a study that we're going to start into in the fall, and we're looking at ketone esters for high-intensity missions. So think of these, and it's kind of a generic statement, but think of this as individuals who are going through a very long extended mission. They're not going to have a lot of opportunities to fuel, maybe even just one opportunity to pre-fuel, and then they're going to have really high bouts of high-intensity exercise through the course of this very long mission. And during this entire time, they have to maintain peak cognitive performance and also physical performance. And along that, they also have to have a degree of neuroprotection, which is something else that we're really interested in. So we're doing all the physical assessments with this. We're doing cognitive assessments. Again, they're all mission relevant. We're doing muscle glycogen recovery again, inflammatory markers, metabolic efficiency, and then we're also looking at markers of neuroprotection to see if maybe that has an impact. Ketone ester fueling has an impact on neuroprotection. And so just kind of summing this up, and I'm just going to keep this brief just to keep everybody on track, but just summing this up, you know, it's, we're all interested in looking at, you know, the med medical applications, but also the potential performance applications when it comes to athletes for keto, the keto diet or even ketone esters. When it comes to these military populations, we're looking at some of these applications, not just for protect protecting them against the stresses they experience acutely in the mission set the sets that they work in, but also they're exposed to these stressors repetitively over the course of their career. So we're thinking career longevity, long-term health, not just for their careers, but then also for when they transition out into the community, both for their 
for their capabilities to transition well into the community and also for the family. And that's all I have. Thank you so much.